Hello LumaTouch fans. The big news in our version 3.1 release is that LumaFusion now has video scopes. Scopes are key to getting professional level color correction on your videos. Here's why. We all see colors differently. That's true for our cameras and displays as well. Video scopes give us an objective tool so that we can create edits that will display our creative vision faithfully on any screen. Let's dig in. The video scopes are found in the color and effects section of the clip editors, and you'll see this button here at the top of the preview window. Tap that to turn the scopes on or off. By default, you'll see three different scopes, a histogram, a waveform, and a vector scope. You can drag this bar to change the size of the scopes. Long press the scopes button, and you'll see different arrangement options for the scopes. You can change which scope displays in each window by tapping this button, and you can configure how each scope displays using the same menu. There are a lot of options, so you can find a setup that suits your workflow. I'll just leave a single scope window up, and let's take a look at the histogram. The histogram may be familiar to you because most digital cameras feature a histogram to help you judge your exposure. In video, a histogram is a graph made up of 256 levels, or 1024 if you're using 10-bit video, each one representing a tonal or color value of the pixels in your image. Pure black is on the left at 0, and pure white is on the right at 255 in this 8-bit example. I'm going to turn off the color channels and just have this read luminance, the overall lightness and darkness of the image. If you see a hard line on the ends of the histogram, you know there are a lot of pixels that are pure black or pure white. They're clipping, meaning they're not providing any detail at all. Now I'll just bring up the waveform here. The waveform is a bit like a histogram, but it's flopped on its side. The 255 value is at the top, and the 0, the black value, is at the bottom. It reads across the image, left to right, so you see a spatial representation of where the brights and darks are in the frame. Now, a histogram and a waveform can both tell you if you have clipping in the image, but the waveform will show you where that is in the image. The last scope is the vector scope, the round one. It plots each pixel's hue and saturation around a color wheel. You can see how each one of these squares is plotted to its own spot on the wheel. Watch what happens when I increase the saturation. More saturated is further from the center. Now I'll show what happens if I play with the color sliders. If I increase red, colors with red in them will move toward red. If I decrease red, everything starts to move toward cyan. If I drag the hue slider, it shifts where colors fall on the wheel. The primary colors and secondary colors are marked with these little boxes. The very center is neutral. Let's look at a couple of typical workflows that will give you an idea of how you can make use of the video scopes. This clip was captured in a log profile, so it looks kind of flat, meaning it lacks contrast and colors appear unsaturated. First, I'll apply this D-Log LUT, which has a profile designed to get colors and contrast back into a more natural looking state. Sometimes the LUT takes it a bit too far, but you can dial it back to your taste using the blending slider, here. You can see the effect very clearly, but let's watch the scopes as I turn this on and off. As we're making these changes, Keep your eyes on the scopes and watch how they're reacting. Now we're going to do something similar, but instead of applying a LUD, we'll do the adjustments manually. There are lots of different approaches to adjusting a clip, but I'll just start with a contrast slider. On the scopes, watch how as I increase contrast, you can see the darker areas are going darker and lighter areas moving toward the light. If I take this too far, watch how the histogram and the waveform both start to stack up against the bright and dark edges. That's clipping. Notice how I'm losing detail here in the lightest bits and in the shadows. I'll pull those back so that I have good detail all the way out to the white and black points, and then I can use a variety of other controls, levels, brightness, saturation, to arrive at an image I'm happy with. Color correction is full of personal aesthetic choices, but the scopes give you the tools to help you understand what it is you're doing with all those controls. Now let's take a look at white balance. I can see I shot this with the wrong white balance. Fortunately, we can fix that with the help of the scopes. We'll look at this with the histogram and the vector scope. Now, I know that white wall is a fairly neutral white in real life. Let's use the scopes to help us get it looking white in our image. The first thing I'll do is to crop in to isolate that portion of the frame. 
Then I'll add the original color preset. Now I'll adjust the RGB color sliders to see what happens on the vector scope. In the vector scope, pixels that show up in the very center, here, contain no color information. So a pure white wall would map right onto the center. But our section of white wall, this little cluster of pixels here, is heading off down towards cyan and blue. That's why the image looks so cool. So to fix this, I'll have to move this cluster of pixels closer to the center of the vector scope. I'll adjust the RGB color sliders to do that. The vector scope is telling me which way I need to move, toward red and yellow in this case. The histogram shows me when I've arrived at pure white. When these spikes come into alignment, I'll have my pure white. Remove the crop. Boom! White balance. As with anything, you may wish to tweak the look of this further to suit your own vision. That's it for this one. I hope this gives you some ideas of how you can put LumaFusion's video scopes to use in your own projects. Happy editing!